morning. How are you? I'm in sunny downtown Brooklyn. Palm, right outside this window, there's like two, 300 palm trees. And about 50 yards beyond that, there, the water that comes in is just, it's, it's so blue, it's green. You know what I'm saying? It's like, makes Bermuda look like polluted water. That's downtown Brooklyn. Come and visit us sometime. And only joking, it's not so pretty down here, but this is the day the Lord has made, and this is where God has put me and my friend John and my wife and the congregation, and you know what? Where you're, where, when you're where God wants you, it's good. I don't care how bad it seems, it's good. But where you go, where you want to go, and that's not God's plan, you got problems. Problems by the plenty. Troubles by the score. Got to be where God wants you to be. So they've asked for a king in 1 Samuel 8. In verse 10, Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of the chariots. <laughs> you, know, you want a king? Okay, you're going to have a king. But by the way, he's going to take your sons and say, hey, little ones, run in front of the chariots. That's a great place to be. So while they're in battle and chariots are, are part of the warfare, your sons are going to be there in the front. Great spot to be. But that's what the king is going to demand of you. Some you'll assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He'll take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He'll take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He'll take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to the, his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. Samuel is giving them like, this is the way you want to go? This is what's going to happen. God's telling you, this is what the king is going to do. He will take a tenth of your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. And when that day comes, you'll cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you. No, in that day, you'll cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. So, of course, the people being logical and being of a sound mind, said after they heard that, oh, that's the way it's going to be? Guess what? We change our mind. We don't want a king like the other nations because they ground you into the dirt and they enslave you. We want to go back to God over us. No, they didn't say that. After all the warnings he gave, listen, you can't make this up. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we'll be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. So you just, after giving the warning of what's going to happen, they said, we still want to sign up. We want a king. We want to run in front of the chariots and take the spears into our bodies. And we want to be ripped off from our land and the sheep. And then our, these kings are going to enslave us. But you know what? We just want to be like the other nations. We can't stand this weak, this weak image we have. Just an old prophet praying and trusting in an invisible God. And some of the people walk up to and go like, yo, Joshua or whatever, Mordecai, like, where's your leader? Oh, my leader is like God. I know where, where, I don't see him. See, that's our king over there. Look at it. You got a new chariot. We're leasing. We lease every year a new chariot. That's our king. That's in us. 
We want to seem big when big is nothing to God. What the world calls great, God calls an abomination often. And what the world laughs at, God calls great. Are we willing to die to ourselves and accept that? That to serve Jesus, you can't fit in with the crowd. You want to fit in with the crowd? You want to be a hipster or you want to be like impressive and all of that? not following Jesus. Here's what he said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart and you'll find rest for your souls. You know when we find rest? When we give up trying to be somebody and impress people. Because when you're not interested in impressing people, it frees you. I don't have to put on and worry, does she like me, does he like me, do, uh, do I seem impressive? We just trust Jesus, be sincere, love people, and it is what it is. Verdad, no verdad, it's true. But these people, they're going to get it. But they're sowing disobedience to God, and they're going to reap a king. They want to be like the nations. So here's the question. Do you want to serve God and let God take care of business for you? Or do we want to serve some human king or, you know, there's something in us that hates the invisible. It's the carnality in us. We want to look impressive. We want to be, I'm going out there to preach in normal clothes. I want those $800 vintage Nikes. Come on, what are you talking about? I don't want something from a bargain store. I want that cashmere sweater. And then people are going to look and go, hey, the dude's got some threads. But I don't know about, the longer I live, what does it matter what people think? What people think doesn't bring peace or joy or security. Better to just today, let's pray. Lord, we bow at your feet today. We make you our king. It's your job to protect us, supply for us, and direct us. You are my king. Jesus, rule over us today in all your gracious kindness, and we'll give you all the praise. Amen. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Mm -hmm.